Hi, I'm Dr. Gerald Malloy. I'm a board certified neurosurgeon. I have multiple offices in Florida. Uh, the offices that I am uh, most frequently at are Melbourne and uh, Orlando and Titusville. Uh, I've been asked to uh, create a discussion uh, today about annular tears, which is a uh, uh, subject which is near and dear to my heart. These are uh, people who come in with an MRI scan that may or may not show disc bulging. But on the MRI scan, we can find that the uh, outer ring of the disc material, so disc material has several um, architectural points to it. It has an outer laminar ring and then inside it has a jelly-like center and that jelly-like center is the shock absorber. Um, so this outer annular ring is fibrous. It's, in fact, we call it the annulus fibrosis. And in this particular picture, uh, you can see on this model that there's a small little defect that's uh, been created in this outer lamina and some of the jelly has squeezed into that space. Many times uh, patients come in complaining of an annular tear or complaining about pain in their back and we see a related annular tear. And what it starts off like is a bulge. And so this is an example uh, contrasting in the other direction where that tiny defect has become a little bit larger and some of the fibers have become ripped and torn and the disc material now is being pushed out into this recess here. So if the spinal cord was here, the spinal cord would be being pressed on right there. And this can be a cause of both back pain, but also leg pain because the nerve roots which travel next to these areas can be uh, impinged on. So for instance, here's an example of a nerve root being impinged on. And if we put this disc next to it, we can see what's happening is this nerve root and this disc material are, inter are interacting and the nerve root has to be able to move in and out of that space easily and it can't anymore because of the disc bulge. If we look at that disc bulge internally and let's say it got a little bit worse, what we would see would be something like this internally. So the, the nucleus is now pushed through completely on the outer fibrous annulus and the disc material has pushed its way out and extruded and herniated. So when the disc material gets all the way to the outside, now we're herniated disc versus if it's just contained within the disc space, we say bulge disc. But this particular disc now is pushing on not only the nerve roots, but the pack of nerve roots centrally or the spinal cord itself at other levels. The specific point about what happens here where it punctures through the annulus is an important one because the annulus has sensor fibers that run in it. At every level, uh, there's sensor fibers that innervate the outer annulus. The purpose of these fibers is really to protect you so that when you lift a heavy object and the weight of that object pushes down on the disc material, the disc material bulges in all directions. The pain sensors limit that and try and prevent you from blowing out a disc like what happened here. But when the annulus is torn on the outer ring, those fibers can get involved in a scar or they can get involved next to this tissue, which is slightly acidic, chemically uh, alien to those uh, nerve fibers. And the more material that pushes on those nerve fibers locally, the more pain there can be. And so this can be a good representative of a cause for back pain that eventually can become leg pain, where we can have swelling of the nerve roots and we could have swelling of the nerve roots on either side. So we could say that these nerve roots were normal size and here's one that's swollen and still trying to squeeze in and out of a very tight canal right there annular tears when they occur usually are a source for pain. Often those are uh, centralized right to the area where the annular tear occurs. Sometimes they're slightly referred because they disturb some of the sensor fibers. We can then, uh, those sensor fibers will feed up the spinal cord to the somatosensory cortex of the brain. 
and give those pain signals that would normally stop you from doing the action that was causing excitation of those annular fibers. In this case, there's no action that you can take that reduces that pain, and so the pain continues at a very high level associated with it. The kinds of things that we do that can help with that pain are we can do a steroid treatment to diminish the inflammatory component of pain, we can do um, some minimally invasive operations that remove some of the disc material, especially in bulges. We have no incision disc surgery where we can use a small needle and work within the core of the needle to introduce instruments that will allow us to remove some disc material and debulk that area and reduce some of the components that are causing the pain. There is some testing that can be done. So we do testing called discogenic pain or evocative discography. These kinds of tests are trying to introduce via a needle a small amount of extra pressure in the disc space and try and pick up whether or not that causes the pain. And there's a variety of ways that can be done. But the summary is, is, is trying to prove by injecting a small amount of dye whether or not there's a cut in the disc that goes all the way to the outside or a rupture of disc material that goes all the way to the outside and also whether or not that level is being uh, is exciting the annular fibers and creating pain. When we find that, there are a multitude of therapeutic options, but many times we end up and with a, a surgical solution for that kind of a picture, whether or not we remove some of the disc material, block those fibers out, and, and or if it's extreme, we might need to um, go so far as to do a fusion surgery at that level and remove the bulk of the disc material. It's impossible for us to tell before seeing the MRI scan and examining the patient what the next best step is but often we don't go to surgery as a first line, we do injections and the injections might be a combination of uh, injections that block back pain, but also some of the leg pain and reduce swelling and inflammation in the area.